awesome. Does it look good? So cute. Okay. Let me try to get this in this ring light here. guys okay well welcome to our wine wednesdays we've been doing it now for what like four or five weeks yeah a while yeah we've been doing it for like five weeks where we go live before the survivor episodes and we had so much fun doing it and i'm like so sad that survivor's over so i think we want to keep continue our tradition with the lives on wednesday luckily today at eight we're gonna have natalie join us but before that we're going hi gergridge good i'm glad that they're here um, but before that, we just want to do our traditional Wine Wednesday. This is what we'll do every single Wednesday. It's going to look a little bit different every week because sometimes we'll have a psalm come on. Sometimes or somebody from the winery come on and describe the wines. It's going to look different every week. Today we're going to play a little game. Um, but traditionally, the Wine Wednesday, this is, that's this. And then we're going to move into the Q&A segment, which is Natalie, and that will be at 8. So if you're just here for the Natalie segment, Shame on you. Yeah, stick it out because Kim's in this portion. She's I'm gonna in both be portions. Yeah, she's well. in both portions, but she's gonna be hosting the que the Q and A. So this is just gonna be our traditional wine tasting, and we're gonna play a fun game today. Kim I is like Kim is my guinea pig. Game. Kim is my guinea pig. So like I suggest a game or something, and then Kim is always the person who has to put up with it and do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so today we are drinking Gergridge. They're from Napa. I believe they're Napa, right? Yeah, Napa. We've actually been to their winery twice. Um, our, we had so much fun there. Look, they were so good to us. Like, when we went, they explained everything. It was so fun. We yeah. got so drunk. So drunk. They're right outside. There's actually a wine train if you go to Napa. And I've heard it's really cool. I've actually never done it. So that's, like, on my to-do list when I go there, along with balloon, the balloon ride. So if you guys know anybody who sets either of those up you let me know and I will contact them but Look anyways how drunk we were, we were yeah <laughs> Kim come on you don't <laughs> it was our first winery of the day so they were pouring for us we had such a wonderful time and then we actually went back in fall uh, me and my other friend Sarah where we were able to grape stomp like um, oh, Lucille Ball or whatever still. it was so fun and then we got to like step on a shirt and we like it, it was just like living my dream basically drinking wine stuff every like, day in napa is the dream though napa is just the best place yeah. ever but anyways we wanted to feature them for this special day we're actually doing a giveaway which we will announce the giveaway winner at eight ish um but which is going to do this the gurgur Chell chardonnay along with a survivor souvenir but until then we're going to play a oh she the girl said we got to get you on the wine. I know I know we've done it. We want to do it so bad, and they have like now murder mystery ones and really cool themes, so we have to do it. Uh, they have, I think they have a Harry Potter one even. Oh my god, I would die. Yeah, so <laughs> we, this is like on our to do list. But anyways, so the game that we're gonna be playing today is we're gonna have Gergrich sent me some tasting notes for our wines. We have been to hundreds of tastings. This is how I'm prefacing this. They describe these wines to us every single time. So Kim should know by now, right, Kim? Because you're a pro. You've been to hundreds of tastings. The tasting notes in the wine. So we have two different wines here. We have a Zinfandel so <laughs> and a Cabernet. And I'm going to have, I have a, a list of uh, tasting notes in the wine. Kim is going to have to name at least three of those tasting notes. Wait, three each or three? Total? Three, three of each of them. Oh my God. And then whatever those tasting notes are, when if Kim gets this them right, so no, no, because for each of them that you get right, I'm going to give you a favor. Yeah. It's an IOU. And for me, that's huge because I don't like owing people anything. So IOUs are worth a lot of money. I actually suggested giving Kim, hi, mom. I suggested giving Kim um, $5 for each one that she got right, but she said she'd rather IOUs. That's how much they're worth to her. So anyways, all right, so we're going to start with the Gurga Chills Zinfandel. All right, here you go. Give it a little swirl. Okay, we have oh a notepad God. here. You can, write, so you can write three of them. Why don't I just tell you? Have you have to taste it. No, 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 you can't. I'm not going to remember. And I have to look at the, the sheet that they gave me. Okay. All right, so give it a sniff. Do, show everybody how you do a tasting. Oh, my God, I'm going to butcher this. Guys, this is not... We are not wanted. pros. This yeah. is why this I'm is so going to be I'm so sorry. I love show. this winery so much. I'm so sorry. 
they, that they, good? They, is this a swirl? That's a swirlish. Yeah, that's that's a good swirl. And then you're supposed to look at like the legs. Unfortunately, this we don't have red wine glasses and we're no pros. So or just take this to the grain of salt. Legs too? Yeah, but Kim, this is look at the glass. Okay. The glass has legs. Okay. Just sniff it out. What is in it? I, I'm not. The, it's a little bit of the cork. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not a pro. All right, sniff it. Stop complaining. Okay. I think I have one of them. Okay. Maybe two. Kim thinks she has. Do I have to put a blindfold on or am I? Oh, 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 oh. I have a blindfold. Oh, wait. <laughs> so the blindfold actually isn't necessary. There's no but, purpose to um, it. Kim, I never get to blindfold Kim. So this is just like. Ow. This is just an excuse for me to blindfold her. <laughs> this is so dumb. How am I going to write How without amazing being able is to this see and it? not dumb at all? Anyways, Wait, so, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, how are yeah, you going to? I can't see anything. How are, no, 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 you have to keep it on. This is going to be great. She can't see what she's writing, so now we're going to also have to try to decipher. Here's now I'm not going to see if I entered the take, cork. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. I didn't think things through properly. Okay, give it a taste. Okay, I don't think I got the cork. Okay, good. And okay. now here's here's the thing. Okay, I can feel it. Can feel okay. It. Okay. I think and um can you give me some examples? No. <laughs> I'm not cheating. She like I said, she's been to hundreds of wineries. So actually while you do this, I'm gonna fill up that glass and I'm gonna drink the rest of it. Maybe Hurry up! We have nine minutes before Natalie. Maybe like done. some sort of like nut. A nut? <laughs> like okay. A walnut or. All right, take your blindfold off. Show everybody. Oh, it's backwards. Okay. This is stupid. Blackberry, plum, and nut. Here is the description of the wine. This gorgeous wine reveals tangy raspberry aroma aromas. Close. Close. Underlying black cherry lushness. Not at all. She didn't get that at all. A subtle touch of strawberry, Close. not at all. Close. The With a hint of blackberry. Yes. High five. That's one point. Yes. Okay. Uh, along with the rich, complex flavors, which continue to evolve in the glass, it's firm, elegant, and long aging potential. Wait. So no plum. Uh, it pairs with a rack of lamb or steak sandwiches. You didn't get plum or nut. Okay. First off, can nut even be in wines? I <laughs> yeah, need to like, know. Yeah. I need an answer. I think some ones have like. Walnut or something, whatever they'll tell okay, us. Okay, so you got one point. I'm honestly pretty impressed. One with point. Myself. You get one favor from me. Okay, now let's erase these two. Thank you. Oh, they said woohoo, go Kim. Yes. People are cheering her How on. How stupid do I look with the blindfold on? No, you look great with the blindfold on. All right. Okay, now this is a Cabernet. Guys, these ones are delicious. By the way, here's the Cab. Kim, put your thing on. I am. She's probably cheating. So no, I'm not. Okay, now do the, your sniff test thing right here. <laughs> Imagine okay. I broke this. Glass. You gotta do a sniff test. Oh yeah, you're right. Be a pro. That helped me before. Be a pro. All right, let's see. I think Natalie's texting us. All right. I'm so nervous. Now. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Go with what you know. Okay. Okay. I feel confident in like. Oh, and Gergridge says you can definitely have nutty characteristics, which is a nice way of saying you're wrong. <laughs> oh. Wait, are you saying that or are they saying they that? Said, they said, they said that. Nutty oh. They said that there could be nutty characteristics in it. And you're adding the you're wrong. nice way. Yeah, okay. No, there definitely can. I know I've heard that before. Okay. Don't believe that. Okay, here's your thing. I really can't see anything. Okay, did, did you did you pick up any flavors? What what are you thinking about it? I'm think. Is this it? I'm thinking oh, that cherry. smells really good. I'm thinking strawberry. So you're going the berry route. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, maybe like a vanilla. Am I done with the blindfold? Yeah, you're done with the blindfold. I'm actually pretty impressed. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Okay. This Cabernet, this wine, on the nose, this wine exhibits aromas of huckleberry, blueberry. What's a huckleberry? Vanilla. <laughs> I thought that's Wait, one. honestly, I don't know what huckleberry is either. No, I don't know. I I'm think it's something it from the really South. Quick. Like, that sounds like South thing. Anyways, we don't know what huckleberry is, but that is the aroma that it's getting. But listen, you got vanilla, <gasps> as well Two as hints of fresh tobacco, nutmeg, and blood orange. 
Mm -hmm. Not Meg. <laughs> you didn't get any of those. So just give yourself that point. And then, but also here, they threw you a freaking Hail Mary because it displays fresh red berry fruit and firm tan and structure. Red berries. I Both think, red berries. Check, I, do Wait. we give, I, I need to know. I'll give her strawberry. But is cherry a berry? Yes. Should oh. that be considered? Yes. I need to know because I With don't think hearts. so. No, that means yes. That means that's because no, 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 no. I don't think so. Mom always says she. Mom says she always goes with green pepper as a guest, and that's actually true. I've seen her use this on every single white wine. Um, see, no, oh, I'm getting word. a bunch of no. You're getting one no. And I, and I and you know what? That Thank person you, seems Amorita. smart. That person no. seems smart. Oh, see? Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, oh my God, Gurgurt, you're betraying me. I thought we were in this together. Now I owe her at four favors. Woo! There's I am a... getting bagels and coffee okay, every day. Here, here, I should have set an expiration date on this because three years from now, Kim's going to be like, remember that time when we no, did that wine tasting? Tomorrow. My first hangover, they're all, they'll all be yeah. used. Oh, you're right. You're right. I know. <laughs> I take advantage of Kim when there's hangovers. But anyways, okay. Well, now let me, do, let me yeah. taste both of them. Okay. So this is the Zin. They're so good. There's somebody frowning from at some winery that's telling me that this is a bad idea to do them back to back like this. Yeah, you should definitely like do something in between like a palate cleanse. See, I never buy Zinfandel and I feel that that's a misstep for us. Do you want to try them back to back and see which one you like no, better? You can't do that. Yeah, but yeah, guess what? We're making our own rolls in this lab. Wait, can I just quickly too? What's the one I've been drinking? Oh, oh, oh that's, oh, that's the, the Foom, the Foom, oh. Foom My Blanc or something. Yeah. Oh my god, we're so embarrassing. Let me get the bottle. But if you need a white, I've been drinking it all week. It's literally amazing. I mean, I went and bought another bottle. It's, it's so pretty. Good. It's empty right now, which <laughs> is what she's drinking here. But it's the Fume, Fume Blanc. Definitely screwing that up. But as you can tell, we liked it. It's empty. This just got taken out of our recycling, so that's a little embarrassing. But. That's fine. Anyways, I like, which one do you like better? Do I have to choose? I feel like we no. have to choose. I'm going to choose. I want to choose. Oh, really? I do want to choose. I want to choose which one I like better. That's probably yeah. sin. I have horrible taste. So, I mean, you like, love red Zinfandel I know though. I so I feel like. Zin. I do, but the cab is really good. I think I got to go with the cab. Is that the second one I tried? Mm -hmm. I kind of want to go with that one too, because I got all of them right. They're both good. Moral of the story. Well, the story is that, oh, they said I pronounced Fumé Blanc correct. <laughs> Can you pat me in the You're back? Like French. I'm going to do it too. Two pats on the back for me. Okay, so moral of the story is that Kim is better at this game than I expected her to be. I need to try harder next week to stump her. I feel like, I feel like maybe this is something we should incorporate more often. Yeah, I, like I feel like things. the blindfold wasn't really necessary. Like, it's not like I can see what you're doing, but... It's fine. Absolutely, the blindfold is necessary, and here's why. There is something somewhere that says that when you're blindfolded, your other things, your other senses get heightened. So, like, your Lauren sense of goes, smell. Is this the winery that you drank too much at? Meaning me. Yes, probably. Oh, no, 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 it's not. It's not. Which one did? It was that same day, but it was the beginning of the end for her. But anyways, here is my point. The blindfold is necessary, and I need you all to back me on this. The blindfold is necessary for Kim because when you close one sense, all of your other senses are heightened. So how would you, you probably wouldn't have gotten all four points if you did not have the blindfold on, and I'm sticking with that story. Okay. Let's get to the wine of the week, or did you want to wait for Nat for that? No, no, no. We could do our wine of the week, and then we will add Natalie in. She has a wine of the week. She says she's trying to be, like, on a positive train, so she's trying not to whine. But you can whine, like, you just, like, get it out, and then you're positive. Well, this is what I said. This is the one time of the week that we bitch about things. Yeah, and then and you're to not be, allowed to. To be perfectly much. honest, I can never really think of a lot of things to whine about. Yeah. So, um... I never have an issue. Kim never <laughs> has an issue. She has a list of things. And then I say it the next week, and then she reminded me that she said it last week, and then I, I again, look like an idiot. So, okay, Kim, why don't we start with you? What's your wine of the week? My wine of the week is unfortunately, well, fortunately, but unfortunately, Memorial Day weekend is this weekend, which is literally like a holiday. I mean, it is a holiday, <laughs> but like at the Jersey Shore. Yeah, like, it's, it's so thing. much, are there kids here? It's so much fucking fun. We, and like, no, they need to know because eventually they're going to turn 21 and they need to get I know, to Jersey but Shore. Like, 
I should be like living my best life at like, well, I'm too old, but like DJs and Bar A and like all my favorite Jersey Shore bars, Parker House, Leggett's, like my literal favorite bar of all time. And I'm just like worried for them. And I just like want to go there and get so drunk and have so much fun. So I my wine is that I can't be there this weekend, but um, I'm sure they'll figure I it out. I will give you a cheers to that wine. Thank Let's you. drink to that. I'll drink I can't wait one. for the Jersey Shore to come back. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Kim always beats me in the wines, and I, again, don't feel like I'm doing a very good job this week, but my wine this week is that New Jersey does not allow wine to be sent to New Jersey, which is an issue for me. Because for us. For really, us. Yeah. We get wine delivered, and wineries cannot send their wine to me, so my lovely boyfriend who I love so much, sorry for pissing you off today. Honestly, um, I really fucked up, sorry. I got mad at him last night when we were playing games, it's my fault. But anyways, um, I get it sent to his place, so thank you, Pete, for all taking all of our cases of wine. He's in New York, so they allow to ship in New York and Florida, just not New Jersey, big wine. That is a big wine. Okay, let's And I would also like to give Pete's parents a quick shout out because Pete wasn't even there when this case of wine came and his parents took it in and held it for us and didn't drink it, didn't open it. Like they deserve a pretty little shout out. I did say, out. I did say that they could have a, one of the bottles of wine. They didn't take it and maybe I'll give, I'll have to give them something at some point. Um, because we've proceeded to now drink all of the wines and we're going to give away this Chardonnay next but first and foremost let's get natalie in she's texting us right now all right natalie cheers cheers love you thanks for doing my wine wednesday with mm -hmm. me okay all right let me natalie request to be in it now we're probably what you guys I'm are like all so waiting for so oh, oh god scarred oh god from last week when that girl didn't accept me that's her right yes yeah, okay that was way easier last week remember when ariel rejected me i still know her name oh god yeah Hello. 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 Hi. Look what I got for y'all. Ah! I told her I'm not. Really, come with a wine, and she's like, "I don't have any wine in the house." I'm like, "No, a bitch wine. Like, bitch, have something to bitch about." I don't she know what this is. It's my cooking wine, so I'm drinking. <laughs> Cheers. Well, Cheers. Some good wine. Mm -hmm. But I do have a wine. Um, should I go? Did you go, yeah. Michelle? Yeah, oh, yeah go, go. Right all right, so my wine for the week is that I went to see Trin, and Nadia did not let me hug her. So first, I was behind a glass, and Trin was like, Nat, Auntie Nat, and I, Nadia did not let me touch her. But at least I got to see her, and she let me into the house, because Nadia is so strict with Corona, but that's my wine of the week. Oh, that's, that's so hard. That's really frustrating. She's literally she's the so cute, cute baby. She's so, so precious. She was in Fiji with me, <laughs> I was, like playing, and I was like obsessed with her. Yeah. She's also, so much for my dress, I did not feel like wearing it. <laughs> I know. We, we, should, we had a call earlier so I could fix, tell her how to like get into the live. And because she's never done this before, she's like, Are you wearing your dress? I'm like, No, I'm sorry. It's itchy. I'm wearing. She had a dress on dress. before. I had a dress I know. on before, but it was showing my boobs. And I was, I couldn't buy double sided tape. I tried packing tape. That's a fail because yeah. apparently you can't use packing tape on your boobs. And the problem. That would hurt so much. I didn't want to have a Janet Jackson moment on this live. Don't. We would get so many more viewers, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Just take off your shirt, Michelle, now. Honestly, but. <laughs> Mostly came in like me, so it wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't help me with the viewership. But, uh -huh. um, but anyways, wait, hold on. I have I something for Kim. Oh, Kim, so dumb. I am such a pawn. Okay, so yes. So. Oh, so Kim is gonna change. Kim is gonna be Jeff. She's gonna ask me and Natalie questions. I got her a blue button down. Unfortunately, I couldn't get khakis in time. <laughs> we can't so, see your legs. It's okay. Kim, you could have just put it over your black shirt. Kim is just over <laughs> your shirt. You guys, this is commitment. Okay. We should have just got Pete to be Jeff, uh, and she could have been, uh, she could have been Thea. We could have had both of them at our finale reunion. <laughs> I know. I. Oh my God, that would have been amazing. We could have like created yeah. a whole fake finale for us. Yeah. Fake. <laughs> we dropped well, the ball. Yeah. Why is he not? Why is your yeah. boyfriend not Thea? What? 
Why is your boyfriend not Sia? Yeah, why oh, isn't Jeff's it? here? Jeff's here. Why did I? <laughs> Oh my god. I don't okay. I don't think he could pull Jeff off Roach Tia. Is in the live. Hi Jeff. <laughs> oh my god, this is so dumb. Okay. All, All right. right. This is cute. I, have, I like it. Do you guys want to start yeah. with um take a sip of your wines because there's okay. a lot of questions. Wait, wait, wait. So wait, look, why don't we start with who should we start with who won the giveaway? Yeah, yeah. Start with that. I'm I like, go ahead, yeah. apologize because I did it the laziest way ever, but I swear I did count. I actually have the footage. Can you show them me Hello, counting? Everyone. I'm here to tally the votes. Wait, can you show Oh my god, me? Nadia look. just texted me that she's watching live and so is her fiance. <laughs> okay, look, I counted. She can be Sia. <laughs> Tell her to join in. Oh, wait. Okay, yes. I yes. counted okay. them, I swear. Kim has video proof. Anyways, here's the person who won. The person who actually won, by the way, um, did not follow the instructions. So unfortunately, I could not honor their win. And I'll post it so you see me counting and everything. And you can see that I'm totally legit. I'm not, a, I'm not doing a sham. Anyways, T word, <laughs> T ward seven, T W A R D seven, one. So I'll reach out to you on Instagram. I just want to make sure that you like attach a photo ID so I can see that you're of age so that I make sure that I'm not sending wine to a child. And uh, then I will also send the wine and this beautiful souvenir to you. Okay, that's that. That's covered. Oh, somebody Ooh, else. Congrats. Had to do too. <laughs> um, somebody from, so Perplexer Puzzles also did a giveaway. Perplexer Puzzles like does all Hi, Pete. Um, I hope you saw my apology later. So uh, we're sorry about that. Oh, Sarah's here too. Hi, Sarah. Okay, so anyways, Perplexer Puzzles does like basically imitations of puzzles that are on Survivor. And they did a giveaway. So they do exact replicas. In fact, they just put out the Fitz puzzle, which is like the three tier puzzle. Um, and they just he put it out. send that shit to me so I can stop practicing puzzles. Wait, I had him send me too so that when we can be together, we can compete. Okay. Yeah, I mean, right, you're so totally going to beat me on the puzzle, is, but whatever. <laughs> um, the winner of this is Kim Barely014. So Perplexer Puzzle will be reaching out to you. And look, it's Kim Barely. Cute. Cute name. Okay. I always went the Kim Possible route. But... We're done. Okay. We accomplished everything. Like, I just feel like we All just right, take so much. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. I'm going to. Okay, so what were you saying? All right. Some people DM'd me questions before. Um, oh, and we'll post it on Michelle. So I'm going to start a few and then chat. Don't worry. I'm here for you. I'm going to come and get you and you can type in, um, and I'll answer those or I'll ask those. Um, okay. Hi, I'm your host, Jeff Probst. <laughs> um, okay. So the first question, <laughs> Sarah's on here. So this is so appropriate. Um, do you guys agree with Sarah's assessment from tribal that women are treated differently when it comes to scheming and lying on survivor? Yes. God, opening up with the heavy questions. Geez. Sorry, I didn't have the light. I, I will start with this one because I just saw an amazing fact actually on Inside Survivor that Natalie, you are the first female to actually receive any votes at Tribal Council since Heroes versus Heroes, Heroes, Hustlers. That is since in 35. So For all the women that have got in there, they're have received I'm the zero votes. Is that not insane? That's crazy. What the hell? And you're telling me- I feel me like I read that and I was like, no way. What's that? I feel like I read it somewhere and I was like, that's impossible, but I guess not. Um, you go first, answer the question, and then I'll answer. Okay, I feel like there is some type of stigma where women are, I guess, I honestly think that women just have more to prove when they get to final tribal than men. Men can play these like more aggressive games and it's like looked at as a benefit. Whereas if women play that game, they're looked at as like bitchy. And then if men play, I don't know. I just feel like there's a double standard on the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I keep playing devil's advocate. And it sucks to have to play devil's advocate in this situation. But I keep saying if I was a dude and I alienated myself from the rest of the idiots on extinction, would I be viewed as being like, you know, so uh, like uh, mean and being like to myself or if I was a dude would they embrace that kind of aggressive game plan being like listen I'm out for number one that's me screw everybody else I got to do what I got to do to get back in the game and would I have been penalized for that aggressive mindset 
or would it have been viewed as being, yo, he's a baller, he did what he needed to do, dude got 16 tokens. But for me, it was like Natalie alienated it, alienated herself. She was really all by herself. She ate all the peanut butter. So <laughs> I, I, you know, like I just think that there is a double standard and it's something that we either have to be conscious about while we're playing, which sucks, or explain ourselves at the end and try to like tell people like, hey, embrace this about me. Don't hold it against me, which sucks because... Um, you think that we have a bigger hurdle like for instance in in my game if i played my exact way but i was a man i do believe it would be a surprise because look at mike from his season he was on the bottom he was completely alienated he won a ton of immunities at the end yeah. got himself and, out of that rut and it was totally prized and, and nobody were, gives I, you the 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 props for the immunities it's like we just skip over that section where at the final three days, like you were in the clutch, like you won immunities that like you weren't even supposed to win and you won. And like, like when a guy wins immunity, they're always like, everybody's so hyped and like, oh, he's a challenge beast. But then we just forget the fact that you want so many immunities this season too, with like crazy uh, challenge competitors, you know? So um, I, yeah, I do feel like there's a double standard. I feel like if a man is sitting at the end, they have a better chance to win than a female. I'm sorry. I yeah. Do. Females have the to one, do hard to win. Yeah, That's my opinion. The, Obviously, you're never going to get a straight answer. I, I mean, the stats are speak for themselves, I think, but I do yeah. think I'm more conscious of it. Anyways, okay. Anyway, next. <laughs> <laughs> 60 seconds. Yeah, they really started up in a way. I was, <laughs> sorry, I was like glancing at the chat while you guys were chatting, obviously listening to you fully. Yeah, and I did everything right. The best host. But um, do you guys know what kind of peanut butter it was? Like, could you tell the brand? It was crunchy. Brand? So, no, we could not tell the... Um, we could not sell the brand, but it was super crunchy and it was okay. really yummy. Are um, you like a creamy peanut butter kind of gal or a crunchy? At you home, have... I'm a both. Depends. If I'm having a sandwich, usually crunchy. But then if I'm mixing peanut butter and like uh, yogurt or obviously in a smoothie, then, <laughs> then I would uh, obviously do smooth. Um, also, there is like this other, just like a tad bit on the note of that. But uh, also being like a woman of color, I don't know how that affects going to the final three I think that we can pretend that we don't see these certain certain demographics and that we're all blind to uh not seeing any color but I wonder how that plays like being a woman of color I feel like I've never had the opportunity to feel like I was part of a majority so I don't know how it feels like to be a part of a majority and look at a minority sector of like a demographic and be like oh she's not like me uh, but I wonder sometimes, because there is a stat that shows like the number one voted out <laughs> person is always uh, like the highest rate is a woman of color, which is insane. But I think, and I totally agree with you. I've seen that stat as well. I think you should be really proud of yourself because I think that you probably, a lot of people who look like you are now watching the Survivor and they probably really admire you for getting as far as you did. So you should be super yeah. proud to be such a strong person like woman and and be able to get so far both times on your season and you really give a good name to your community so be proud of yourself yeah both of us hey yo hey yo jersey, jersey. okay Cheers i know i told you i'm gonna be drunk by this obviously that's the whole point okay moving on give yeah. a next question these people didn't shouting out gurgur chills is which is what we're drinking today we just did, if you want to see our Wine Wednesday, it was a total shit show as usual, and that was posted Always. before. So, Always. okay. Okay. Um, why did you guys decide um, to vote for Ben rather than Lucina in the final six or to go to the final six? You mean, uh, be, uh, you mean, uh, vote out uh, Denise instead of Sarah? This is Ben. Is that No, wrong? I think, because I think, wait. Why did you decide to vote Ben rather than Lucina in the final? Was Ben sixth? Ben was, uh, that's when he like laid on his throat to oh, leave. <laughs> I don't know. I don't so like, know, okay, but... let's explain this. The yeah. Ben vote, Sarah told us she was with us and me and Michelle were both skeptical about her voting with us that block. And that's why I was like, you could see, I was like basically crying at tribal because I thought it was either me or Michelle going home and I wanted to play my idol for either her or myself. But I just didn't know where the votes were going. They were either going on me or her. And uh, Sarah came up to us and she's like, listen, Ben's going home. I'm voting with you girls. Just vote Ben. And that is such a crazy move of hers um, that, you know, I, I was like, I did not believe it. I mean, Michelle was skeptical, but we had no other option than to like 
fake trust her. And so obviously I was going to play my idol for Michelle or myself. And that's why I was like, you know, shook because I was like, one of us are going home. And then she ended up voting for Ben to go home. And I think too, like what wasn't, obviously wasn't shown prior to that is a lot of people are asking why we didn't, and this might be a question that Kim has so we can explain it. But um, a lot of people are asking why we kept Sarah over Denise. Over Denise. And when that had, when that conversation was happening, there was a lot of whispering. Like we went up to Denise, we went up to Sarah. Sarah basically pled, at least this is my memory and correct me if I'm wrong, but Sarah had basically pled like, I'm with you guys yeah. the next vote. Like we will work together on the next vote if you keep me on this vote. And we said, listen, Denise isn't pledging us the same thing. And we basically looked at her like, you swear, you swear. And she could have been lying to us, but sometimes a promise in that pivotal moment is enough to get you to the next day. And so it got her the next day. And luckily, I do think that it, it put the cogs, the wheels turning for her to vote out Ben. And I think yeah. ultimately, it was the combination of that plus Ben kind of giving him, falling on the sword for her. Is that what you remember? So exactly the same with me. Yeah. Same. Sarah kind of pledged this allegiance to us. And both of us were like, all right, we can maybe work with Sarah. Uh, and we knew Denise was so loyal to Ben that if we needed to get out Ben next leg is amazing race <laughs> next, uh, episode we could have uh, used Sarah also for me on a side note I just wanted to get rid of uh, Denise and Ben both and so that in that opportunity because they both voted for me to get off so I was like kind of on my little revenge uh, situation there I was like oh, all right Sarah yeah. please get out but uh, Denise let's chuck her <laughs> I love I love it. I love a petty queen um, we are all about being petty <laughs> here. Although I do, I will just say this for everybody. I do love, Denise is a wonderful person. Actually, as is, as is Again. Ben, like, yeah, just I'm wonderful. Like, Every yeah. single person who played this game, I actually saw somebody in the chat earlier say, like, who do you genuinely not like from this cast? Yeah, you're glitching a little bit. Um, who do you genuinely not like from this cast? I, I honestly like every single person. There's a reason that they won. That's what I really, I really believe that. That's glitching. Yeah. Bit. Okay. Um, but kind of on that same train, um, I got asked a lot of your guys' opinions of Ben kind of like offering himself up. Um, and like, would you ever do that? What are your thoughts on it? Hopefully you would never do that. I would okay. You. Well, it looks like Nat is glitched. I wonder if I should. Nat, can you hear Nat, us? can you hear us? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, okay. You're catching up. You're catching up. We, no, we can't hear you, but I assume that you're coming back to us now. Oh, did your ear earbuds die? Rich people problems. I don't have <laughs> earbuds. I literally have something that plugs in and a cord that gets tangled everywhere. That's what third placers do, okay? We have cords <laughs> to our ear headphones. No, no we, we can't, can't hear you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Peace is louder. Okay, so... Um, basically, I don't know. Did you hear the question though, Nat? Not if yes. Okay, I'm going to take, take the question. Wait, what was the question again? Did, would you ever do what Ben did? No, I would never do what Ben did. No. I mean, you guys saw me. I was like, I was, my back was against the wall. I was in a tight situation. I never would have given up for freaking anything. I would have fought my damnedest until they literally kicked me out. That was the only way I would ever leave Survivor. Natalie's just struggling here, so we're going to let her struggle. I wonder if I should X her out and then add her back in. Natalie, can you hear us? Oh. <laughs> you can't hear us? Can everybody hear us? I think people can hear us. I think people can hear us. I think it's oh, you, Oh, look Dan. at all the hearts. Yeah, okay, there's hearts. There's hearts. Oh, Beast Mode Cowboy's in here. Yo, Beast Mode Cowboy's in with Nicole um, Franzio, Fran Fran whatever from big brother and i was talking about you today but it was like beast with you. Beast with Kevin, um um caleb from my season oh oh my god caleb i cry mish can tell you i cry every single um sorry I'm like more. digging challenge oh my god actually, i'm so yeah. fucking scarred from that experience she like, literally watching. cries i, I cry look over every, and she's sobbing. every time like, that there's you? digging like it's so traumatic sorry a mess yay you're back <laughs> you're back Technical difficulties. <laughs> Listen, you crushed it. You're back. It's we, fine. We are good. We're not at a Zoom finale. No pressure. We're fine. Good. We're on live. All right. Um, what question are you guys on? No, Nat, would you ever do what Ben did? I'm just going to assume no. I'm going to go out of No, hell no. 
<laughs> Fair. Okay, moving on. We all know. All right, hold on. Let me check. Um, say who asked the question. Oh, sorry. Okay, Jen... did, I'm just saying it because I think it will be funny to try to hear pronounce these things. <laughs> no, this is an easy one. Jen Dempsey wants to know, was there anything special that you did in your audition tape to get you noticed? I guess I'm starting on this one since you just looked Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I basically just said that I was a badass bitch and that I was a Jersey girl and that I was like willing to get scrappy. I also did a lot of like nods to poverty. Just obviously that's like an easy sellout, but I think I did a lot of like examples in my life, how I play similar games to her. Natalie, I'm going to kill you with your computer glitching. You need to get off your internet because I think your internet sucks. Just use your Wi-Fi, not your internet. Anyways. Um, and you also shoveled snow. In yeah, a I shoveled snow in a bikini on my first Yours one. Yours truly videoed and Mrs. Fitz. There we go. Now you're good. And um, I had puppies in mine and <laughs> I looked really hot. What is and, um, That was it. So I'm wrong with this. It was. <laughs> I love technology. Natalie, get off your internet or whatever. And like just stream it regular. Like disconnect from your internet disconnect disconnect off your stupid internet. oh my god just press what? the my disconnect button and then just do like my internet wi-fi is that the thing that i'm talking about hello is it wi-fi yeah wi-fi yeah hello yeah we can hear you all right i think we're good there yeah you're go. good you're good yes. and you look okay, great okay cool Okay, so for me, I didn't really have to do an audition tape because of uh, Amazing Race. So they basically called us and Lynn was like, so you want to do Survivor? And I was like, let me watch an episode or two. <laughs> and then <laughs> all I did was I watched, um, I watched Tyson's Blood vs. Water because I knew Nadia and I were going on Blood vs. Water, which obviously served me well. Uh, and yeah, so they already had an audition tape from um, Amazing. Did we make an audition tape? I don't even know. But yeah, no, I didn't have to make an audition tape. Do you have any tips for people? Like I get all the time and I'm sure you do too. Like number one question. People say that actually Adam is hosting something right now about auditions. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of people competing us with us right now. Adam is competing with us. Parvati is hosting something. Wendell's hosting something. It's total shit show. So thank you guys for being with us right now. Yes. But I, I Look at it. Yeah this like on my feed after so if you do want to go see any of that stuff you guys can see this later but that is, um, that is like a big question though a lot of people that's all they want to know is kind of how do we get on the show and I say it very like honestly like you have to stand out one because they see so many people and you have to be authentic so uh, casting producers can see immediately when you're being fake so if you get on there and say oh you know I'm such a badass but you're not selling it they're gonna know you're faking it so you have to be authentic to who you are. If that's like some nerdy guy that still thinks that he's going to be good on the show, you just have to sell yourself. And uh, yeah, they, they can see fake. And if it's five seconds in, they'll just flip you over if they're over you. So you just have to be authentic and real. And I would also say like trying to prove that, you know, Survivor like so well that you're giving all these facts or like, you know, whatever, like that's not going to get you anywhere. Like you really need to be a storyteller and you need to be yeah. engaging and I always feel like the person who's going to come through on the audition tape is the person who you're like, you know what, I want to grab a beer with you and learn more. And so like, just look at your audition tape from that lens, like, would yeah. you want to hang out with you? And if you're fucking nerding out over like facts, that's never going to get you anywhere. Find a way to connect, find a way to lean into your character. The things that I'm going to talk about is not what Christian is going to talk about, but I still want to sit and have a beer with him. Mom's mom just told She's Kim so, to stop scratching her boob. Because this <laughs> shirt, like I'm not normally wearing a blue button down. This is literally my first time ever wearing a blue button down. Uh, I Jeff, don't feel you wear it every it. day. Yeah. I exactly. don't feel comfortable in it. Mom, please leave me alone. Stop scratching your boob. We'll never know what she said. Wait, I need to know. What did she say? What we'll shade did she say? You glitched. I think she's on dialogue. Like, Guys, I, just, I am on the edge of my seat. What did your sister say that was shady? I saw an eye, I saw an eye I roll. I see eye roll, so it's definitely shady. I'm gonna kill myself. Oh my God. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, what did your sister say? We need to know. Oh, 
Nadi was being shady. She's like, why didn't you comb your hair? I was like, I never comb my hair, obviously. <laughs> I actually was thinking your hair looks pretty nice. Well, I, it was really cute in the morning, and then I went for a five-mile run, and so now it's wet, obviously. Wait, somebody that I know DMs me saying, like, somebody from Kim's <laughs> DM me saying, yo, I saw Natalie on her run in Edgewater today. It was like, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> so many people message me or, uh, like, uh, Instagram me. Somebody's, mess like, taking a video of me running along the water because I uh, it's, like, the same route I run every time. It's just, like, along the river. And like, it's like super open and, but it's such a beautiful run, but so many people like message me or friends of friends will be like, yo, my friend just said they just saw you running along the water. So that's funny. Like things that nobody would ever say. That was honestly, <laughs> wait, someone actually asked me, I skipped it because I thought you guys were both going to be like, not right now. Um, Shawnee Brams said, how much do you two get recognized in the streets of New Jersey? And today Misha's was like, I just feel like I'm missing out on my life of being recognized because by the time we all come back without wearing masks, no one's gonna care about me anymore. Nobody cares. <laughs> exactly. I have a limited way oh, to no. guys, and I, this is being ruined by these disgusting <laughs> masks that I have to wear. I'm sick of green. I get recognized right. with my mask, no joke. You get recognized with your mask? All the time at Trader Joe's, somebody was like, can I get a picture of like, dude, six feet back up and like, <laughs> Like, I'm like, how are you, rec I mean, if I open my mouth, I'm sure you can recognize me because of my voice, but otherwise I could be some random brownie. How are you going to assume I'm Natalie, you know? I know, but <laughs> you, like, okay, wait, so I met Natalie prior to the game. We actually, did, I what, Zach Brown? Zach Brown? Brown? Yes. At so, MetLife? Yeah. Yes. And no, no, it was City Field. questions that I got, like, did you guys have any, pre have you guys ever met before? Because we're obviously 10, 15 minutes from each other, so they asked if, like, we had pregame alliances or anything like that. I was like, no, I met Natalie once. I had just gotten off of co wrong So I had just, I knew, I'm still skinny. And I was like, just literally had just gotten back, had tickets to, what was it? Zach Brown. Zach Brown, man. Zach and Brown, we're pregaming. And this group of like really jacked hot people that like, came up to me and my girlfriends and like started talking, <laughs> girls and guys, like your friends were awesome. But anyways, they were like, why don't you come back to like do a shot with us? We're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like strangers. Lunatics pre-gaming in the um in the parking lot so we went over and there's natalie and like i was such a fangirl this is my first season. she was so embarrassing so i was i was like pretty drunk and i'm like oh my god kim that's definitely natalie and nadia that's definitely them like freaking out so i go up to them and i like wander over and i'm like hey guys so like i'm michelle and like i know that you don't know me but i had just got i just got back from survivor like it just aired and they're both like so cool they're like cool 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 and i was sitting there like no no it's super cool like it's super <laughs> cool really well i didn't know if you were telling okay. the truth or not but i was like okay this one this girl is super drunk two like that's awesome she's from jersey so another jersey girl but i think i was i, I yeah i can't even believe that was so long ago oh my god that was like the year it's after five, i won too it was five years ago and i was like no, no no it's super cool i'm like trying to explain because at that point i knew that i had made final three and i like thought that i won so i'm like trying to connect with them and i can't say that and they're like this girl she probably got voted out first she's a fucking dipshit and sorry for my language so i'm fucking freaking out i'm like no no, no it's so cool like this is really awesome and they're like we don't care about you at all and so that's the yeah, only time so we met and yes your, only time your uh, like assessment was right that we were very 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 drunk very drunk yeah. everybody well, like, was that brown band that Oh, it was City Field. It wasn't MetLife. It City, was City Field. Field. So fun. I miss concerts. Um, oh, Corona. Remember concerts? Remember tailgating? I was to see, yeah, I was supposed to see Chris Stapleton this summer, and now, obviously. <laughs> we watched the Taylor Swift concert this morning. It was amazing. Oh, the docu? <laughs> it, was it was a full concert, and I told oh, him to before I woke up this morning, and she's like, I watched the whole thing. You just have to watch the last two, yeah, like songs, right. the best songs. And then by accident, it didn't like save, so I had to watch the whole thing through while I was working this morning. All right. Well, you're welcome for that. Uh, I actually, I wait. What was the question like, that we uh, like digressed from? Okay. What? What was I the kinda, question that we like digress from? I've I, lost, I, I, I've I've lost control. We're, we're sorry, Jeff would never do this. I'm, I'm coming back. Jeff, I'm coming pull back. us, bring us in. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming back. So, <laughs> back to Survivor. Um, people want to know, like, what happens after the final tribal? Like, it's so intense, obviously, for you guys. And you've been on the island. And then, like, what happens? Like, oh, God, 
Natalie's Wi-Fi. I, I can't even look at it. What the uh, hell? No, you're okay. You're. I can hear you. I think it's coming back. Like, what do you, what happens? Like, so, so my like first season, off, yeah. yeah. So the cameras turn off, you're like, great season, we're going to take the boats, da, 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 wrap up. And then my first season, we had just, like, gotten whisked off onto a boat to head to Ponderosa, and it was, like, super anticlimactic. And they basically told us, like, you can either go see your cast and reconnect with them, or you can go straight into your room and, like, decompress, shower, do all the things you need to do, and then go out and meet your cast. Like, you obviously have the option of both. Um, but I guess, I don't know whose season it was. For some reason, I'm thinking it's Ben's. They started to implement this this pizza party aspect so actually like the cast and crew are all able to once the cameras turn off all come into the tribal council area they put a piece of wood over the fire they put a bunch of pizzas out and you're oh, able to like fun. eat and drink they pop champagne so champagne is flowing everywhere jeff is there mingling with everybody all of your camera crew and um mic people who we've never met before i mean you meet them right because they're with you 24 seven every single day, but you're actually never able to talk to them because they're not able to connect with you at all. So essentially they, they come out, they introduce themselves, they say where they're from, they give you tidbits about how they think that you played the game, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you just kind of celebrate and then you go back to Ponderosa and you party. That's so fun. It was really fun. I actually never knew about the pizza party part. It was Wait, something think... that the first season and then oh my God. just implemented. Was... Oh, she might be back. Yeah, she, it looks like she's back. Maybe. I texted her. How can I help you? <laughs> I don't know. We don't know how we can help her. But Jeff actually put, she texted me. <laughs> she goes, my Wi-Fi is janky. <laughs> you think having one million dollars in coming second place this season <laughs> okay. oh and she God, can afford dude. her AirPods or earbuds or earbuds, she should get a better Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, she dipped out. She heard me. And then, she gone. She gone. All right, let me reintroduce her. Oh, that's questions. Oh my God, there oh, people no, are allowed no. to ask questions on here. That's crazy. Oh, there, she there she is. I love that she pops up right at the top. I know. It's like they know. We also have another guest. I don't know, guys. Really quick question. I need everybody to stop answering everything and just answer this. Am I allowed to add a there third person on this channel? Am I allowed to add three people, or is it limited to two? I think it's like, you're just going to basically kick me off now because I suck. And then you're going to have your boy on because my internet is no so problem. bad. No, girl. Um, we, we, the last question. So we didn't do anything my season. We didn't get pizza party or anything. We just all, we just, they just packed three of us up. We went to Ponderosa and we had like a party at Ponderosa, which was kind of cute. We had a lot of food. It was really good. Vibes at my, my first season. There was no. And so it was a just a really good time afterwards. True. Natalie, Natalie had was, a... was Leo <laughs> at Ponderosa on your season? It's literally my favorite. <laughs> Unclear. No. I, I no. think he's engaged. At that so. time. He's, engaged. he's engaged and he's really hot. And if you guys ever get on Survivor, <laughs> you'll meet Leo. He's so beautiful beautiful man but pete, i literally love him. pete you're so he's so nice he's like literally the nicest person he's, he's so, so nice he's so hot he's i hope he's not turned into this tuned into this but um i literally made brazil <laughs> go check because is obviously not single dating so i was or engaged to nick so i was like go check if leo is single but he's not and neither are we i was saying he was no, not i am right <laughs> you know just yeah. like you know from a I feel like you can say someone's hot. I can say someone's hot. So okay. Natalie Natalie's Wi-Fi as per usual. <laughs> Natalie, move into a separate area. It's wild. It's a wild time. Yeah. Somebody said Sophie was dying. Somebody was actually, Sophie was actually dying at Final Travel Council. She was really sick. So that's why she looked like she was dying because she was. She's better now. Yeah, you're good. Clearly, you're good. I should have won the two million dollars so I can get better Wi-Fi. I know. That's like it's not your fault. Maybe Tony Wait, can like, donate no, I you a Wi-Fi wi -Fi wi -Fi test, and they said my Wi-Fi was good. So I don't know. I it know, but I glitch out during our finale practices. No, but I wonder. Like, are you? I I think it's better. What if you disconnect from the Wi-Fi? Disconnect from no. like that and go just regular. 
Well, now it's working, right? So hopefully it just sticks. Do you guys like yeah. want a fun question or a serious question next? What kind of fun. vibe are you going? Fun, fun, fun. Okay. Fun. When you first got on the island, you look around, you see everyone who's with you. Who were you like, this person is going to win? Like, who are you most scared of? I was most nervous about playing with Parv, I think, but I also wanted to play with her. So it was a double-edged sword. I just knew that she had so many connections with other players, but I was also drawn to her as a, as a player and as a woman. I wanted to work with her. So it was like both. She's so cool. Uh, I agree. Parv, definitely. I was terrified. Of, I mean, I was scared of it. <laughs> I was fucking scared of everybody. I was going and shitting my pants. Like, how did I end up here with this cast of all winners? Like, I think I wandered onto the wrong beach. <laughs> oh, Nadia but, asked a good question. She asked, like, well, who do we think was missing that should have been on our season? Like, I think Mike Holloway should have been there. I'm a huge fan of Mike, and I think he played an amazing game. So I missed Mike on our season. Um, Anybody else you guys can think of? Mm, I will just say for, I vote for Mike too, because when I didn't watch Survivor um, a lot before Michelle got on, and then when I found out Michelle went on, I was like, oh, I need to watch it. And it was Mike's season that had aired before yours. So I got like super into it. I was so invested in Mike. He won. It was so exciting. So I would have loved to see him play with me. That would have been so fun. I agree. That for was, me. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally agree. That was the season that I was watching right before um, I had went out my first season. So I really, like, I would have loved to see Mike there. I would have yeah. loved to see Cochran there. I think that would have been really fun. Hatch, I was actually really terrified of. Now I think it would have been fun to have him on to add a little, like, maybe humor. Um, Tina Wesson, yeah. I thought she was going to be there. I don't know. You know what? what? I was shocked when I saw Amber because I think that was kind of Tina had been the the person who was gonna be there until. But then when Amber said yes, they were like, "Okay, bump Tina." <laughs> yeah. Basically, oh, Tina would have been yeah. so and cute. Tina seems like such an angel. She's yeah. too pure. So for I Maddie. I get this. What? She's probably too pure for us. She probably wouldn't have wanted to work with us. Yeah, probably. Definitely not. So I'm getting, I got this question a lot. How come you're so good at puzzles and what did you do to prep and why I'm such a physical strength, strength on the beach and what I did to prep? So you go first with your puzzles and why you're such a puzzle queen. I actually don't, did not know that I was good at puzzles until I started being on Survivor. I don't think that's a talent that you know that you're going to be like, that you're good, good at. So, because when are you ever going to have to make a three tier situation all like leveling yeah. out? Like I I just happen to be good at like spatial and memory and things like that. And it's actually something that I found out my first season. Um, and my second season, I prepped a lot more. I started to play, I downloaded a few apps, like just to understand the slide puzzle. Cause there's actually a strategy with that. And then a few other, just like uh, general puzzle, like this matches with this type thing. So I, I did prep my second season to be better at puzzles just because I knew that I was so weak and I don't have their strength. So I knew I couldn't lean on that. So I had to kind of study the brain aspect. It was so funny. Yeah. So next time if we play, you just help me with puzzles and I'll help you get strong and fit and you help not me get like savvy at puzzles. That's and we'd be good to go. I'm so Matt, down. I know like I honestly feel like you have the harder part of that deal. Like did you see her trying to climb those stairs? <laughs> <laughs> but then she played me. Puzzle? Like obviously, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. Like obviously, for me, working out is fun. So all I did was do my regular training. There's, I did some grip strength specific stuff because I know with some of the challenges, having strong grip helps. And I did some random balance stuff, things. But besides that, it was just CrossFit. And uh, I mean, I think CrossFit preps you for Survivor really well because we train so many random things that you would not want to do. Uh, and that's exactly what the challenges are. They're just the most random physical kind of, uh, you know, things that you have to just kind of be able to do on the fly. So I know. And yeah. I, I gotta ask, wine, right? yeah, pour, pour all of the wine. Gergridge, we're sponsored by Gergridge. So this is acceptable. It's Wine Wednesday. Um, but I do think that I probably could have practiced or like just did anything physical, physical a little bit more <laughs> than this. 
um, season because I don't know if anybody noticed, but I basically failed every single physical aspect of this. No, the that one immunity challenge you won was kind of physical. You had to balance and kind of maneuver around things and not touch anything. And you slayed that challenge. So thanks, Nat. Oh my god, it's Nat, you yeah, have to have know down. our family, like our legit, like makes fun of her. Relatives asked me if it was her strategy to be bad at the physical part so that people like be bad for her. Oh, sorry for her or <laughs> what it was. And Misha had to be like, no, I'm actually like literally that bad at things. And people who <laughs> don't watch Survivor, they're like, oh my god, you must be so physical. And then I have to be like, yeah, everybody says that it's not the case. No. It's so not. I'm like, actually, I am totally the opposite. So, yeah, but yeah. you can train me. I, I give you the expect as long as you don't mind tears. I mean, you can train me in CrossFit. Yeah, no. <laughs> I can, I, trust me, I can get you fitter and stronger. And you have, obviously, like the coordination. Because in that cha particular challenge, you have to be really coordinated. So if you just get some, some muscle and we... Get your cardio going, you'll be good to go. Okay, and I can get you on the puzzles. I got you, girl. I'll yes, I need this. That is how you can deduct where things should go. I got you covered. Like, your like, brain just sees and, things differently. It has to because the way you put that together at the end and killed all of us, it was like a tribe of Ron and then you. Because, like, like, what, two cops, me, basically. <laughs> Yeah, there was basically no shot for you guys. This person, C. Maggiarelli, literally wrote, would you ever do a CrossFit workout with Natalie? <laughs> Natalie would have what? no... I missed the question. Sorry. It was, would Mish ever do a CrossFit um, workout with you? Yeah, she's agreed to, so we're going to do it as soon as Corona but is But Natalie has no pity on me. That's the thing. I know. Most of what I like love about hiring a personal trainer is like they pity me. So like they let me get away with certain things, but Natalie would not pity me. She'd be like, "Get your yeah. ass up and yeah. do it." And I, I don't want to though. <laughs> it would be torture for both. Yeah, I'm definitely things. not like you're like I'm not the person that you want as like a therapist while you're working out. Like, call me if you actually want to get fit and strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't um, expect a call anytime soon. So yeah. I, I had a weird. Uh, let's go some weird questions. Do you have any weird okay, questions? Go ahead. You have, weird you have questions. Weird, we do have a weird question from a special person. Ooh. But you go first. Oh my god, is Anthony on? Like, I don't want to do it without him. On. I don't know if he's here. I don't even know. Or his boyfriend. Wait, you go first. Your yeah, weird you question. Go first. And then we'll go. Uh, what? I have some weird questions. Oh, somebody asked me if I ever want to have kids, and they sound like my mom. Uh, <laughs> but. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Cute though. That's cute. That is it was cute. a girl asking me. I mean, I guess like uh, I'm older than you. So um, kids is something that I obviously like I love kids, but kids for me is part of the bigger picture. Like I love Nadia. Like I didn't think I could love somebody more than I love Nadia. And I love Trin, I think just a little bit more. Uh, so kids are a good thing. <laughs> That's so cute. That's terrifying for me that Mish could love someone more than me. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Well, Nadia loves Dash and Trin more than me now, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. See, I don't love your child more than you love me, and so it's acceptable for That's me to love so your child wild. more than you, than whatever. Yeah, I feel like it must be a mutual thing, right? Like, you both love your yes. child more than you love each other. I think parents both love their children more than they love themselves. I mean, if oh, you wait, like okay. it will. Down. So I guess this is it at an hour. Oh, wow. Okay, let's talk. Uh, what else can we talk about before it's done? Oh, my oh God. wait, Kevin wait, is Kevin's here. in here. Okay, so our friend Kevin is a very big Survivor fan. I guess we'll end it at this. He's a very big Survivor fan, and his boyfriend is Anthony from Queer Eye, and they actually reached out. So I just want to thank Kevin for getting Anthony into the season because they love us they were rooting for us and i think they had a question i know their question was would either of you be their surrogates if and when the time comes yes <laughs> and here's sign me up so. as long as you give me extra sperm so i can actually impregnate myself your from your surrogate with your amazing genes yeah they're both so handsome yeah they're both it's so like wild hot. so i want their sperm in order to carry their child 
and, and if they want twins, we can carry at the same time for them and then give birth at the same time and they can have twins. So cute. I love that so idea. Cute. So cute. Do you feel like And I will have like a fitness hall. Yeah, we can have like a pregnancy fit workout routine. And uh, yeah, we would have so much fun. I know. <laughs> yeah. Do you have more to say? There's 30 seconds remaining. Like, should we just like restart and like... I just want to say thanks, call. guys, and uh, thanks to the fans. Oh, let me just talk about peanut butter real quick. Wait, you have 24 seconds. Do we rejoin or do we call Okay, it? so peanut butter. Everybody was eating each other's peanut butter, and the edge was a mess, and the peanut butter was really, really good, and Tyson was the one who started the peanut butter game. <laughs> okay, Tyson I started it. Was so, so terrifying. All right, we love you. <laughs> I hope you like this live. Thank you for coming on, Nat. We love you. Sorry my Wi-Fi is janky. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing more. I know. And my blue Guys, button down. We stopped. Literally we were done. Instant. We were done. And me and Kim sat here. We sighed. We said, that's enough. Enough is enough. And then my mom messaged me. And then my brother messaged me. And then we got DMs. So, I mean, what else are we doing? We're drinking. This I is what we'd be doing anyway. Do I still have to say in the Kim, blue button down? Kim says end it before. And he, yeah, Kim's mad that she has to stay in the blue button the down. The blue. Oh, Jeff, like, let me. Oh, let me add you. Natalie. Yeah. Hold on. All right. Guys, we'll answer a few more questions because I do feel like we got cut off really quick. So. Yeah, I want to do a few from the chat. Kim is mad because we only did um, things from previous questions that we got on Twitter. There was, we just had such an outpouring of questions from Twitter and from Instagram that we really like, we're not able yeah, to so do it all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do now a Q and A with Natalie d directly from the, the chat. chat. So uh, we'll try to make it quick. I'm gonna add Nat now, hopefully. Um, just a reminder, Natalie, cause I know you're on here or you should be on here. Um, you have to request me, darling, and then I will add you. Okay, let me try this again. Do you want me to text her? Yeah, text her. She... This girl with her... Her Wi-Fi. Um, do you want me to put it back up on the stand, or are you going to do, like, a no, Q&A like that? Kim do is done, Kim is done being in front of the camera. And I'm yeah, just gonna... I don't want to wear a blue button down. Jeff should learn the perks of wearing black. Like, oh. they're amazing. Natalie is saying that there's no... Sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off, Kim. I was listening to you. Natalie is saying that there's no option for her to I add. Felt other people, other people were are requesting. requesting. It's probably her fucking Wi-Fi. Ugh. Other, I see a bunch of other people are requesting. Is she in that requesting thing? Mm, mm -mm. Let's check. Nope. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like we should this play is that. what happens. Here, I'll do questions for you while we wait for Nat, and I'll keep an eye on Nat. Okay, let's, Natalie, when you can get in, text Kim. Yeah, Nat, I have my text open. And I'm going to keep you up. Okay. This is Wait, for Wait, I can't see myself. What should oh. I be doing with my body? Oh, my God. Yes. She requested. I probably shouldn't be, like, doing this with my body. What do I look like? Do I look okay? Yeah, you look fine. You. Nat. Everyone pray for Natalie's Wi-Fi. We need a communal prayer. Connecting. Okay. She's okay. here. The queen. Yes. Yeah. Okay, hopefully my Wi-Fi holds up. The first, if I ever have issues, I'm just going to sign off and not get back on. I just didn't like leaving it the way we did. Like, got cut off. I, know. We, I we agree know. with you. All right, let's ask some questions from the Keep chat. Keep an eye on where Sorry, you're I know. Don't point this at my JJ. Like, look at where you're <laughs> things. What? Um, Mishi, how does it feel to be the only winner that was never voted off? I never really thought much about it, but it seems to be something people care about. So it's 
pretty awesome to make day 39, I'll tell you that much, because you can watch the whole season with your family back and be in every single episode. And you get to experience every single day out on the island. You get to have day 39 breakfast. You get to fight for your life in tribal council. So overall, the, the final three experience is probably the best experience you can have. I've never really thought about the fact that I've never gotten voted out, but that's my take on getting that far. Cool. Yeah. Matt, cool. over to you yes. first. Um, talk to us a little bit about um, Serena wants to know, like, how has your survivor experiences evolved you as a person? I know that's like a little deep, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess survivor is an amazing experience. It's like a once in a lifetime experience. And Michelle and I have been lucky enough to do it twice. Uh, it's definitely shaped me to be more resilient. Like I, I always say, I know I'm physically strong, but uh, Survivor has shown me how mentally strong I am and how I have that men mental capacity to just keep going. It's not something you can really test in real life. And so Survivor definitely was a cool opportunity to kind of reinforce that uh, confidence in my mental strength. You and definitely are strong as hell mentally. I will yeah. say, that's one trait. If I could take one trait from you, and put it on to me. Hundo P. I would, like, your strength and the way that you carry yourself, too, with that is, like, yeah. I mean, I have breakdowns, and I, like, cry, and I throw tantrums, and you just, like, power through and are such a boss. Like, love that. But I think it's really unique because something else Survivor has taught me is that being feminine can mean so many different things, and strength in femininity is so like different. Like I look at you and I look at your story and how different we are as women. It doesn't matter. Like my idea of strength as a woman used to be only me. Like I used to only identify with being a strong woman. Woman, if the person was like me and acted like me and I've, survivors taught me that strong women can come in all different kind of uh, persona. So for me, seeing you fight and never give up from the bottom. And I said this on my post, my fake like finale episode uh, questions <laughs> was, uh, was that uh, strength for me is not only physical. Now I see it as like being a fighter from no matter what your position. So uh, for me, seeing you fight every day, being on the bottom, especially with the people that you were stuck on the beach with, that is strength and that is being feminine and being fierce. So I think that's a huge thing survivors taught me to not judge a book by the cover and to realize that females we can be our own version of strength no matter what it is and we all have different assets uh it's about owning that strength and uh, always being uh unapologetic about what that is and always leading with that so that's cool yep <laughs> so so cute amazing it's so true though like to but see you at guy. final three uh, and for you to not get credit when credit is due is just a flaw in the way we look at females and like Trust me, I'm embracing being known as like a beast. And like one of the cool things from this season is that nobody compared me to being a strong female. They just said, Natalie's a strong competitor. And it's awesome that I'm, I was known to be stronger than half the boys on the tribe. Well, basically all the boys. But, <laughs> uh, you know, like that strength can be in so many different aspects. And so being a strong female doesn't have to always present as like a girl like me. It can be presented in a girl like you. And it's about embracing our own um, strengths and our own uh feminine assets you know no matter Yay. what Yay. cheers to that. that cheers, cheers. To that. Thank you. cheers. <laughs> love cheers. i love that honestly so well survivor, yeah survivor puts a spotlight on so many things that we wouldn't have to deal with in real life so it's cool to have those opportunities to kind of dissect and then embrace things that uh you know sometimes we're not uh, always uh, aware of um also love that. Alexa, in a little, like, lighter note, Alexa Barino wants to know, what's your guys' favorite part of the season that didn't get shown? Like, me, my favorite part of your first season was that you got so drunk that you fell off a hammock, and they never showed that, which was so devastating okay, to I me. Not that I got so drunk. I got really full and drunk. Okay. But was oh, there any reward? Like, you know what they didn't show? I like, couldn't stand back up and my mic was like, sh <laughs> like, like it was like suffocating me. I was like, cut the mic off. Anyways, this season, I don't know. I had you know what they didn't show, which I was, so, I was watching with Devin and I was like, oh my God, they're going to diss me on this reward challenge. Remember the reward challenge and you guys wanted a cake? 
They did not show that. And Michelle comes back with like a small piece of chocolate on her cheek. <laughs> and I just grab her face and I just lick the entire, her entire face. And she had just like, we just reconnected. And I was like, oh my God, chocolate. And I just took her and I licked her entire face. And she was like, what the world? Big facts. <laughs> and when I got the peanut butter from stepping down, whoops, Ben like licked my entire face and hands and <laughs> arm. I was like, what is happening here? Like, so you're like, very I lickable. Are deprived of maybe like you know a little sexual. Maybe it's like Ew. a sexual fantasy. Oh my god! Why do you guys want to lick this food is off? Taking of a me? turn at nine p.m. Come on. <laughs> like maybe you guys. I don't know. Maybe that's a fantasy. No, I'm just playing with you. Um, Anna K. <laughs> Ryan wants to know: Was there someone whose vote you guys wanted the most? Like, was there someone who, like you matter like mattered the most i mean me she got no votes sorry so <laughs> this is painful for I you i guess you can, have, you can answer that <laughs> well you still can hope for a vote even though you didn't get any votes you can say that there was somebody's vote that you thought that you were going to get and that you were disappointed you didn't i mean it would have meant a lot to me just to get nick's vote probably just because he's probably my closest friend leaving the season but in the same like token, like having somebody like Boss and Rob or Par vote for you, and I think you should be really proud of this as well. Hundred like, percent. Yeah, they are such legends in their own right, and so to have somebody like that advocating for you, I think speaks volumes to your level of like respect. So I think just having one of them kind of vote for me would have made me feel. Yeah, I agree. Par voting for me meant a lot. I think that. I said this, you know, I was like, the people, the, the MVPs on uh, on the jury voted for me. So I'm taking pride in that. A hundred percent, Nat. You really deserved that. Okay, point um, out, Kim. You're pointing straight at Michelle's boobs. I know. It's because I'm I'm reading the I comments. I told her, I was like, please don't point at my vajay. And then I she have does so, it. No, I she didn't. I was it. giving you a little boob shot. Oh, my God. Oh, the boobs. followers go I up. You're welcome, you guys. Well, I actually I would just like. I would have worn the other dress. I was just like loving these comments. This is like not the first time I've got it, but I'm going to give credit to Live Viction, Live Victions, um, <laughs> asking, would you guys ever go on the Masked Singer? Like, I can't even imagine me singing. Wait, what's the Masked Singer? I haven't even heard of it's it. It's like so. you sing and you wear a mask, and then people vote on you. And so, like, apparently, some celebs have done it. Like, would you, are you a good singer? I guess that's so, the question. Natalie's really. not a good singer. No? Uh, have you heard me sing happy birthday on my cameos? I do a really good job. <laughs> you sing on your cameos? Yeah, me, she won't even sing. I've I sung happy birthday on cameos before, on, like, on request. They asked, like, if I could sing happy birthday, and I've sung happy birthday on my cameos to somebody. Don't say Guess what? I'm going to open up a freaking cameo and I'm going to have 20 requests to sing happy birthday and then I'm going to have to do it. I feel, why did we open up this can of worms? Okay, yeah, forget it. Okay, we are only singing for tips, guys. You have to tip us $25. For <laughs> if everybody tips us enough on cameo, we might be able to make up at least one sixteenth percent of what we lost at Final Trouble. Yeah, Trouble. and I need better Wi-Fi, guys, so tip me on cameo, okay? <laughs> I think Tony should cover your Wi-Fi. I'm like so devastated. Tony, I already told Tony he's taking Michelle and I out as soon as Corona's done. So our choice of restaurant in the city, and we are having a night out on Tony. No questions asked. A hundred percent. Like to leave his house though. He's no, I literally to told him that he has to throw us the cutest barbecue. Like I want chandeliers. I want barbecue. Like, I want like options. a fancy steakhouse in the city. Forget that. <laughs> I like Tony won't go to a steakhouse in the city, Matt. Never. You know Tony this. Like, ever. Yeah, that's true. Tony also asked me, one of his like uh, office, I mean, his police buddies is obsessed with me and asked me for a video. And I was like, honey, uh, cameos are $85. And he's like, what? And I was like, what? Did you just say 85? I went up to 85, yeah. Yes, yes queen. So just because finals week, I'm going to go back You're down first. because I'm a steal. You are still $40. $40. I was a steal, but I knew because of... Um, because of finale, like I didn't want to be drowning like you, so I went high because I know nobody's gonna really pay eighty five bucks. I am. Wait, guys, I thought that all of these people in the comments were just like loving me, but actually, it's because Kim Spradlin is here. Oh, so. oh my God, Kim Spradlin's here. So yeah, whatever. It's okay, Kim. So it's not me. 
<laughs> it's the other Kim. Hi, she Kim. She wrote hi, Kim. I'm sorry. I know. I'm reading Kim's Kim, comments. Michelle, I have done so much. I literally let I you know. blindfold me I today. I know. I know. Okay, Kim um, Spadlin, I have an update for you. I have everything from the room, my room, that you redid. There's still a box over there because I have to put something together. But it's almost done. And it looks great. So thank you. Why don't you guys give some words about, like, Kim's game? Because I feel like everyone wants to know. And Kim's here to comment whether okay. you, if you say something great. wrong. Well, because Natalie didn't play with Kim, because Kim Natalie got voted out on day two. <laughs> all Dang, shade. <laughs> Natalie? Yeah. She's frozen as per usual. Okay, 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 that's fine. Um, no, but actually, like, I loved playing with Kim. I actually went into this game. You had asked a question on the prior live, just, like, saying who was I, like, most scared to win the game. And my she, her answer was Parv, and then I said I was scared of Parv, too. But actually, my answer would have been Kim. I think Kim plays a masterful game, and I saw it in real life, and it was pretty awesome to watch. Like, Kim would pull people. She'd be like, okay, Jeremy, you want to go talk? She would talk one-on-one -on -one with everybody in front of everybody and nobody would think twice about it because that's how Kim connected with people. And can she, we talk about Kim yanking my pony too in the water? Like really hard. <laughs> Wait, she did that? What? I am going to post a picture of, there's a picture of her yanking my pony from the back so hard in the first challenge because I went, I was the only chick that went twice into the water. And uh, the second time I was versus Kim and Sarah, I think. And I had Denise with me who couldn't even reach the bottom of the bloody ocean. So it was just me versus two chicks. And Kim yanked my pony so hard and she apologized later. But somebody, a fan, screenshot the actual picture. Yes, you did, Kim. Do not lie. <laughs> Kim is a fierce competitor, though. And what I realized, I was always of the mindset play with people that you think played the best game, surround yourself with those people. And <laughs> she said, Nat, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I, I told her. It's like... an amazing game. I was like, okay, so she said in her free press that I could be her Chelsea. And honestly, I like really want to be her Chelsea. I know Chelsea came in third, but I came in third anyways. And I would have been happier coming in third. No, I was happy coming in third, Tony. I don't never want to come in third. Yeah, no. But, but I thought it was awesome. It just, shows, like, like, it just showed how Survivor, like, uh, brings out the crazy in all of us. Like, but at the same time, when I did post uh, post game interviews, when they asked me what I thought of Kim, I said Mama Bear because when she came to the edge, she was like super super sweet and so caring, and uh, it just shows like you know uh, in a challenge, like you just gotta go. It's fight or flight, you know. I'll just say that Kim's loved ones were like my favorite loved ones because don't say you love Tony's loved ones too. I loved yeah, and you said you loved Trim too. Be quiet, but. Kim's um, sister came and she was the only one with me like when we went to visit them and other than it was the only sister relationship and her sister just gave me like so much advice like I was in your position the first time this is like how I felt everyone else had kids everyone else had like fiancés and her sister was just so sweet so Kim please give your sister like my thanks in just being like in that situation she was so so sweet to me and so helpful and um it was so nice and i remember her. actually kim saying too like now that you bring that up it reminds me of a conversation that i had with her because i was pretty much one of the only at this point in the game single people who didn't really my loved one was my sister and everybody else had a significant other i might be blanking on somebody but everybody had a significant other or a significant other plus children and so I felt really, like totally alienated. And Kim said, no, my first season, I was your age. I had just gotten out of a divorce. And actually, my sister was my loved one. So we connected over that. And I think one of Kim's strengths, and and I hate to talk so much about this, but I, I'm glad that she's here. But I think her strength is being able to connect with everybody on a one-on-one yeah. -on -one level like that. Like we, Some of my most real conversations, I remember me, Kim, and Jeremy were all talking on a rock one day. And it wasn't game. It was like totally personal. And I think her ability to connect with people is, and, and take it away from the game is so amazing. And that's why people are so loyal to her because you believe everything she says 100%. and she means it. Yeah. And she does want the best for everybody. I don't think, I think she's good at this game because her intentions are good. And okay. that's, that's my, I just went on a total Kim 
brand. And I like loved every minute of it. And I should go on a Sophie brand too, because I'll tell you, the people who played this game best this season were the women. And Sophie also played an incredible fucking game of Survivor. And I was there and I saw it firsthand. Her, Sarah, and Kim played amazing games. And that's the reason that they were the target at the phase that they were at. Because it was like, we need to get them now or else they're going to they're gonna get to the end and they're going to win. And that's the truth. Kim said enough about me. <laughs> yeah, and that's humble Kim serving a slice of humble pie. That's fine. I moved on anyways. I moved on to Sophie. Sophie. Who, Okay, anyway, um, what else do we have to talk about? I'm, it's like almost past my bedtime. I'm like, okay, well, oh we can wrap it. Goodness, we can wrap it. Or do you want to do... No, you guys can keep going. I'm just like literally a grandma and I go to bed at like 10 plus. Do you want more <laughs> fan questions or are you so tired? Do these guys have any questions? That they're... Yes, I'm getting them now. Natalie, I know so many lesbians that I'm in love with you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Always flattering. That's awesome. Lesbian rights. Uh, let's go. I love the game. Um, love the game. Where are the questions, guys? Come on. Come on with the questions. Kim is navigating them. Listen, Jeff over here. <laughs> no, I'm still in my fucking blue shirt. Like, I wanted to wear my little black t-shirt that I've been wearing all day, but you made me put on this blue shirt. And so here I am. Okay, let's answer two things that people all want to know. One, would you play again? Obviously, I, I know your answer. Yes. Yes. Both of us would play again. I don't think everybody from our season would. I think definitely the younger, no kids people would. Me, Wendell, Adam, Michelle, and maybe Sophie. But I think Sophie's also had it. Um, everything, everybody else is done, so. <laughs> yeah. It's toll on you. And, like, it really, it really. Yeah, yeah we got a lot of questions about, like, the yeah, Bouncing back and stuff. Is. Because the picture I posted today on Insta, like, you see, like, and, you know, it's so crazy, like, what our bodies go through. And I think the second time going back in, it was almost like my mind and body knew that what was coming. And my mind was stressing out. And I was, if I tried to gain weight. I couldn't gain as much weight as I wanted to. But I was trying to just eat as much as I could because my body was, like, telling me, you're going to starve. You're going to starve. You know what's coming. Um, but the extreme weight loss is so bad for so many reasons. And, uh this time I was really scared about bouncing back. Like I used to ask a doctor all the time. I was like, dude, like, can I actually gain muscle back? Cause I feel like my muscles are just so depleted at this point and there's no nutrition in my body and I'm still running for like three hours on end on these challenges. It was scary. I had that same question. Like, will my muscles come back? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were worried about too. That's all I was, I was worried about. <laughs> Were they ever there? I went to my doctor and I asked that. They were like, yeah, there is potential. But, um, <laughs> sure but I thought I was crazy. <laughs> my first season was so like crazy that we didn't have any rice that this season for me, like as far as it was such a walk in the park. Like it was so easy to, to yeah. have rice. And I felt like I was like the most fed person ever. I felt like I was a, a king. So yeah. my first season, I mean, my first season, I ate coconut breakfast morning noon and night so yeah great that's crazy um now, can you talk to us a little bit about amazing race people kind of want to know like how annoying is all the flight hours like give the amazing race fans some some tea. yeah amazing race gets no love now i feel like it's like uh know, it's know, wild. Step sister of the cvs like trio but uh amazing race was really fun because it was with nadia and it was we were a hot mess like running around the world um it, the flights are long and it depends on how you want to navigate because they don't tell you what flights to take. But Amazing Race was super fun. Like it's stressful in the moment because you're 100 miles an hour, but you get to check in and eat at these amazing hotels and get the buffet and stay at these awesome hotels while you're traveling. Uh, very different, obviously, from uh, Survivor. Now I've done Amazing Race twice. I've done C uh, Survivor twice. So I guess I should just have to go. I went on Amazing Race twice, dude. Like, First season, I got all the way to the end. Second season, first eliminated. So just like wow, my survivor career. Like your just like my survivor journey. career. Yeah. And that's Survivor, my first okay. season, I went all the way. Was horrible and or amazing? Yeah, exactly. This time I, I was horrible and then amazing at the end, but not one. <laughs> but <laughs> so I have to just go on CBS. I just have to go on uh, Big Brother now twice. I told that, uh, I said that on the podcast today with Coconuts. <laughs> 
Um, Nat, tell us a little bit about playing either game, Amazing Race or Survivor with your sister, because I've been trying to avoid literally all of these fucking comments that ask whether me and me should play Blood versus Water, because I don't want to answer that question. But I you was love... scared to go on Survivor? Yes. <laughs> Have you met me? But... Who cares? It doesn't matter. Once you're out there, you're, you're something and you will just kick in and you'll be fine. True. But tell us about playing with your sister. It's really intense. Obviously, my first season, Nadia getting voted off first kind of uh, propelled me through my season. But I don't know if we were on there together. It would have been really bad because there's this one challenge where you have to go like head to head with somebody physically. And obviously, Nadia and I would have had to go against each other and it would have been a bloodbath. Like Nadia has always been a little bit stronger than me, but I'm faster. So I think I would have been it's like the sumo at sea challenge. Uh, that would have been really intense. But it's so many emotions playing survival with a loved one. It's like this added layer of um, complexity that is hard to kind of navigate around. Yeah. I would have a horrible time doing that. I could never do that. Yeah. Well, I think you that we get a lot of questions about the challenge. I've always, people have always tagged me in the challenge, but um, it just seems like there's no gameplay, right? It's just uh, physical. I don't watch the challenge as much as I should. So yeah. my ex or just kicking it so actually he called me his ex so oh so okay. is it fair to call him my ex if he called here's me the thing ex? this was just gonna this was gonna be one of my wines and i forgot but like i don't understand what constitute dating in what are this we in 2020 week, yeah I, exactly I dating is what you make it i don't understand like if you're hooking up with some like kissing someone <laughs> and you're dating? like going okay, I'll tell you on dating one on one you hang out more than once seven hours a day like what does no, dating mean to see each other I'm not sure posting fucking pictures with each other sure. no that's bullshit like dating is what you make it but obviously it you have to just be on the same page with the person you're doing whatever with if you are you know the communication's key and like you know, it's just, we're adults and people just need to either own it or not. Like people. Okay. So, do, so we derailed because we were talking about the challenge, but I guess what I, I was getting at is that my ex or. Just say it, exactly. Careful it. verbiage. Yeah. He called Careful me his ex on a podcast. It's not that serious. Dude, just say it. Is what is on the challenge, Jay. And he was on Survivor. I love well, Jay. Yeah. And he loved Jay. Like, still to this day, I love Jay. He's such an angel. But he's on the challenge now, and I actually got asked to go X on X on the beach with him, and I said no. And then, so I was in the running to go on the challenge. Thank God I didn't go on, because I seriously am so weak, and I would need probably years and years of training. I do think that you would do actually really well, and I feel like you would excel at the challenge. For me, personally, it's less... I, what it seems like is that the challenge is less like puzzles and more physical. I think it would be harder for somebody like me. But the drama aspect, and like, I'm so we could both go on. Yeah. Imagine that. Because sometimes there's like partners, sometimes there's no partners. MTV. Yeah. Natalie already answered her preference on peanut butter, everyone. She said she likes chunky and smooth. She isn't, she likes That's my friend. Oh, okay. If it's your friend, let's answer it again. Yeah. So, uh, Godfrey, you already know the answer, but any kind of peanut butter works. My favorite is obviously, <laughs> it depends on what, what I'm eating it with, but crunchy has got to be uh, uh, plain. I'd go for crunchy. Now, people want to know, I don't actually know what this means. Hopefully you do. What's the deal with the Yule situation? Oh, so, um, yeah. So, basically, extinction was really hard, and people... Some people were more fake on the beach than I was. And I just didn't have energy to not only focus on getting back into the challenge. But if I had something on my mind, I would say it. And this meant for the collective. And um, there was an incident where basically you took a long time to come back with the rice. And not only me, but uh, Parv and I basically explained to you because you just got there. We said, like, listen, if you're going for rice, we have limited firewood. And, uh, yeah, you was really receptive to it. Obviously, like, for me, I, quote, unquote, come off as a certain type of person because 
if I was a guy, I don't know how that would have been perceived. But yeah, it wasn't really a big deal. And the peanut butter situation on extinction, like everybody was eating everybody's peanut butter. And uh, Tyson was the first one to buy peanut butter. And now the timeline is a little bit messy because every like now I can't even remember the, the phases of peanut butter. But Tyson was the first guy to buy peanut butter. And he left some on the island when he got back in. And he told Parv where it was. And so Parv had that leftover peanut butter. And I was actually looking for Tyson's old peanut butter when I found the clue with Parv. So um, it was just like pe peanut butter gate. Everybody was like crazy for peanut butter, obviously. And at the end, I bought peanut butter and I shared it with uh, Tyson and Parv. I gave, I even offered Nick some. Nick said that story about how I was like, you want some peanut butter? The day before the challenge. And he felt bad to eat any because he had just got off the main beach. So... Everybody was crazy on Extinction and everybody was basically on the edge, uh, at the edge. Uh, and I'm not holding any grudges about what anybody has said because I know the mindset of not getting back in must have sucked. Like all of us were there just with these hopes and dreams of getting back into the beach and I was the one to do it. Uh, and I'm the first one to admit like if, if I didn't get back in, that would have been a really hard pill to swallow. So I'm giving people like a, the benefit of the doubt and some people have apologized to me and it's all good. Positive vibes. Um, I think we're all trying to get through this survivor experience. And the last thing that any of us need to do is bring each other down or talk uh, smack about each other. Like we are a family, whether we like it or not. And we have to just stick up for each other and have each other's backs. And that's it. Good girl. I, that, yeah. I have to say, I, 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 and I truly mean this from my first season and from this season, I really, I stole your line. Oh, I believe that there's no use in bad blood. Listen, if people, things happen on the island, it's a game. Tensions are high. Like, put yourselves in our shoes. We're star absolutely starving. We're fighting for $2 million. We're sleep deprived, cold, wet. Like, we're in extreme situations. And also, like, the reason that they choose us for survivors is because we're probably strong personalities to some degree. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm a strong personality, but I think that I'm fairly different. Anyway, that's besides the point. The point is that there's going to be friction. That's what makes good TV. But ultimately, at the end of the day, like, look, like having a cast and coming together is such a powerful thing. I think it's a shame that we weren't able to have a live reunion because it is a way to kind of mend some of those heal some of those open wounds but i do think that there should be all love in the cast everybody sorry yeah and no um, i will just say yeah. that i actually didn't know that this is such a like a drama filled question so oh my god anthony's here hello anthony anthony oh, loves you. you nat do you see him but yes and like listen what i can what i can say about the edge is everything i said to everybody everybody else was thinking just didn't have the balls to say so if i'm the one who stepped up for the collective of the group and said things then i'll take the heat for that but you know what i wasn't out there you know on my own natalie campaign i was just trying to get back onto the main beach and if that meant you know focusing on myself i can't apologize because how are you going to win the game if you don't get back in the game? Hundo P, I feel so bad that I asked you such, I didn't know that was like such a crazy question. So Mish, I'm going to ask you the craziest question because no! yes, yes, please, please, I've been avoiding it. I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know it was a thing. So now you have to address the Wendell thing. I'm sorry. I've been yeah, avoiding it. I went, I went there, girl. Yeah, exactly. So now Mish, you have to address the Wendell fair, thing. Kim. I think you What do you mean? I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. Lauren, I'm yeah, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Jeff Probst would have known, but he also would have probably done the same exact thing. I didn't even know I was being such a good host. Like I'm thriving. So just tell us about Wendell. Explain the Wendell thing. And Okay, so be done with it. Situation. Actually, something was posted on Reddit today. Let's look at her wine. I'm ready. I am actually ready for this question. Hold on one second. Wait, okay, wait. Also, can we be on an episode of uh, Also, can we just, that would be amazing. Also, can we just address my mom? Wrote Anthony, DM me, please. Like, no, mom. No, Anthony mom, is not mom, DMing you. DM my mom DMs every mom. Don't DM him. Please <laughs> have a little chill, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's cool and hot, and I know my mom wants us to have babies so bad. She's probably foaming at the mouth to get his sperm. Like, relax. All right. You want to... Did I deter enough to not have to answer this question? No. Wait, do you, you want to have Anthony jump in? 
because you can't have two people. Anthony, do you want in on this? No, we'll we'll get him next time. Now okay. you have to you have to stay to hear her Wendell answer. Okay. Okay. No, Anthony, here. don't accept my mom. <laughs> Anthony, don't accept her. Okay. Actually, she's really wonderful. She raised us. Just you know, DM her during the. Okay, movie. stop. Get the Anytime Wendell question. Before, again, that's when she starts drinking her wine. So okay, early. answer the question, Michelle, okay. quick. The question is, what happened with the Wendell situation? I feel like I am every girl who has and guy who has been in this situation where like you're in a relationship but you're not really exactly sure what that relationship is basically we started talking april kim's birthday so april 29th that's when we started like seeing each other we talk we text whatever i was in boston he would come up to boston a few times we would zoom every single day two times a day we were very we would go travel and do events together like something was posted on reddit about his most prized possession being something that I gave him. Like the reality is, is that we were dating. Were we dating officially? Did I, would I call him my boyfriend? Like I call Pete my boyfriend? Probably not. But would I say he was somebody who I dated? Yes, I went on a lot of dates with him. I had feelings towards him. Did I love him? I have love for Wendell. So whatever. Anyways, besides the point, I think it's so messy when you're in a situation that your feelings are already so heightened, you have to go onto an island where you're starving, you want to be on the same page, but you're not communicating properly. It was intense. And I think that what got lost in translation is that there were also moments that we were on the same page and that we were working together. But I think for the narrative and for the edit, I think it made more drama to show the friction. And so, Fuck, did I just ramble that whole thing? Did any of that make sense, Kim? No, it all made sense. Kim, nod your head yes or no. I don't know. <laughs> She's not paying attention. I am I am I'm trying to pay attention. I'm trying to read the comments. I don't There's know. so many I don't things. Know that makes sense Jeff Brooks has such a hard job. But honestly, I will I'll agree with you that I don't actually understand in 2020 like what constitutes as dating. Like if you text each other all the time and you're not no, seeing anyone not else and it, you're making out and like no because but, now they consider dating like people do long distance dating that have never met like so if that's dating then anything can be dating <laughs> I know. anthony said it makes total sense okay anthony said anthony's probably sense. drunk too and so that's why it makes sense to him <laughs> yeah but i don't know it listen it's messy my advice to everybody is if you're ever on survivor make sure your ex isn't on the beach with you if yeah. you're ever on, on survivor just baby don't shit where you eat I don't know. I don't know. All right, on that note, I am out. I got to go to bed. Okay. We're going to do a CrossFit workout soon, and Michelle's going to come, and we'll do a live video of me and Michelle add, doing Anthony? CrossFit. Yeah, and that will be fun. Wait, Nat, thank you, honestly, so much for joining. This has been such a pleasure. I can't wait to see you in real life and be able to I know. How you do physical activity. <laughs> no, you're going to work out with me. <laughs> sure, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girls, thanks. This was, my, this was my first Survivor Live. It was really fun. Bye. And, love you, uh, Nat. Yeah. Love you, Nothing but positive vibes. Fans, we love you all. And everybody be safe and take care. Yeah. Love all you. right. Let's see if Anthony requests Wait, request to be. request Kevin. Let's just see. See if Kevin, well, actually, they have to request us. No, I know. This is the true moment the of friendship. The moment of truth right now. I really hit my peak with my wine drunk right now. I'm not drunk. <laughs> He's here. Hold on. You can't see. I just want to say. <laughs> Anthony, you have no idea how much we love you. I'm blushing and I'm starstruck right now. I don't know if Natalie's still watching this, but I just want to say some of both of you, you're like your most important personality facets. If they were demonstrated in men, I feel like they would be a lot more socially acceptable. But just because a woman comes off as like tougher, like Natalie being super fucking opinionated because of all the toxic masculinity in this world, and I'm not having a go at any of the other cast members, but just because of how we're all socialized, that really affected shit. I agree with you. Actually, so I know you that you were on another live kind of prior to this, but we had talked about some of the gender like discrepancies between when you're at Final Tribal. So there's actually maybe 14 winners at 
all 14 female winners out of all 40 or 13 or something like that females mm. just seem to have a harder time kind of um getting the votes at the end of the day which is a little bit it's crazy up. i know yeah. we have to... it is fucked up wait where's, where's kevin he's working he's very busy and i have to go back on a call because i'm literally just bailed on, <laughs> on something so i have to go deal with that right now we did want to tell you though we know it was your dog's birthday yesterday oh my god yes and no I it wasn't my dog. dog it was it was a shelter across the street and we do like a socially distanced doggy party with all of the rescues because the building i'm in is really fancy and they're like designer dogs and the other building is all like the rescue mutts so we get them together and they eat all kinds of cookies and treats and they run around in circles and it's great can i just say butter vuv the best dog names ever Don't all we rescues we they're love all it. ratty rescues and they have the chicest okay. names yep okay well send kevin our love yeah, we're so glad awesome. you love him all right take care bye bye love to you both okay. love you too babe all right Everybody on the live, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been a hell of a ride. Oh my God, I can't believe Anthony joined. Of Anthony has been actually, so big shout out to his boyfriend because his boyfriend Kevin, actually, yeah, he's Kevin, literally the best. got him into the show. And we just ha like, have been communicating and they are just such angels. I mean, every they're just angels. I don't even know what else to say about them. And I love it, their passion for it. And they, they were actually rooting for me and Natalie before Natalie even got back in and before they even knew we were final three. So they've been um, day one fans. So for them to show up to our live tonight was awesome. I hope you guys had fun on our lives. We've been lives. for almost two hours. Like, this is a wild we, we did it as best as we could. Ugh, I'm exhausted. We really did. And I hope you liked it. Okay. Bye.